Welcome to our journey through the enchanting and complex history of Valentine's Day. From its murky origins in ancient Rome to its current status as a global celebration of love, we'll explore how this day evolved through the centuries. Whether you're a history buff, a lover of romance, or simply curious about how Valentine's Day came to be, you're in the right place. Let's begin. In ancient Rome, the month of February marked the start of bird's mating season and was considered the beginning of spring, symbolizing a time of purification. It was believed that birds began mating during this month, leading to the celebration of love on a specific day. The Lupercalia festival was an annual Roman event that took place from the 13th to the 15th of February. According to historian Noel Lenski, the festival commenced with the Luperci, also known as the Brothers of the Wolf, sacrificing two male goats and a dog. Following the sacrifices, a feast was held, which included certain ritualistic actions, such as the flogging of women to enhance their fertility. Subsequently, a lottery occurred where young men would draw the names of women from a jar. The chosen couples would then become partners for the duration of the festival, sometimes even for the entire year, often leading to feelings of love and eventually marriage. However, with the introduction of Christianity, the practices of the pagan festival were deemed to be unchristian and were outlawed. Due to the popularity of these activities, people would secretly continue doing them, meaning Christianity was forced to find a way to include the festivals in their religion. This was done by turning the huge Roman festival of Lupercalia into a Christian celebration in 496 AD. Many people argue that it was just bought away in society, only to reappear as the holiday we know it to be today. Valentine's Day also has some of its roots in the Christian faith. There are a few different legends that suggest Christian ties to the origin of the day. One story is that Valentine's Day honors a saint named Valentine, who was martyred for performing secret weddings against the wishes of the Roman Emperor. The tale dates back to the 3rd century in Rome. The Roman Empire was famously massively powerful at the time and was rapidly expanding. However, within itself, the Roman Empire was divided with many different religious beliefs and practices. It is said that the emperor at that time, Claudius II, was a firm believer of the idea that single men made better soldiers because they weren't preoccupied with their families, and so he changed a law, which meant that marriage was illegal and could not take place. This obviously upset many of the young couples in Rome who were hoping to get married, but St. Valentine conducted marriages during the period, sealing his fate. He was tortured and decapitated on February 14th. While in jail, he healed the daughter of his jailer and wrote her a note signed, From Your Valentine, a practice that the greeting card industry still uses today in marketing campaigns. Sadly, for those looking for a simple romantic story behind the holiday, researchers who have looked into its tales say there's not much proof for these stories. Valentine was a popular name in ancient Rome, and there are at least 50 stories of different saints by that name.
But Geoffrey Chaucer, known as the father of English literature, created the Valentine's Day we know today. Before him, the day was linked to St. Valentine's Feast Day, which originally had little to do with romantic sense. Chaucer's work, particularly the poem The Parliament of Fowls, is credited with embedding the idea of romance into Valentine's Day. Written in the late 14th century, this poem features a dream vision where birds choose their mates on Valentine's Day, symbolizing the beginning of romantic unions. The lines, for this was on St. Valentine's Day, when every bird comes there to choose his mate, serve as a clear indication of Chaucer's intention to link the day with love and partnership. This innovative connection between Valentine's Day and the act of choosing mates has significantly influenced the modern celebration of the holiday, emphasizing love and courtship. Valentine's greetings have been popular since the Middle Ages, but it wasn't until after 1400 that written Valentines started to emerge. The earliest known Valentine that has survived to this day is a poem penned in 1415 by Charles, Duke of Orleans, to his wife during his imprisonment in the Tower of London after being captured at the Battle of Agincourt. This greeting is currently housed within the manuscript collection of the British Library in London. It is believed that Valentine's cards first began to be sent in the 18th century in England. Lovers sent handwritten notes and small gifts to their love on St. Valentine's Day. It was not until the 1840s when the tradition of sending and receiving Valentine's cards became widely popular in the United States. Today, an estimated one billion Valentine cards are sent each year, making it the second largest card-sending holiday of the year, behind Christmas. In addition to these, teachers, students, spouses, partners, festive lots typically exchange Valentine's cards, making romantic love the primary focus of these greetings, has become widespread to such an extent that the French and the Italian now consider the day to be the Saint's Day. The tradition of giving red roses on Valentine's Day has been around for a long time. Roses are considered to be the flower of love because the Greek goddess of love, Aphrodite, was often depicted with roses around her head and feet, along with a crown banner that was rabbinical that she wore, all of which symbolized her various qualities. It's said that roses grew where her tears and her lover Adonis's blood fell. Like the goddess of love, the red rose entangled over time as a symbol of love and its fragrance and beauty hence became associated with elegant romantic gestures. Not only are roses seen as symbols of love, but cherubs and cupids are as well. Cherubs are commonly known as beautiful, innocent babies with wings. Cherubs are angelic beings, often associated with baby Christ, and seen in religious art. On the other hand, cupids are seen as more playful rather than religious, often depicted in the nude. Cupid, the small-winged god of love, is typically shown drawing a bow, ready to take a shot. It's also known as Eros in the Greek mythology. During the Hellenistic period, Eros began to be depicted more frequently as a playful, mischievous youngster. Owing to his connections with love, the Victorians of the 19th century, who played a significant role in popularizing Valentine's Day 
and infusing the holiday with its romantic essence, started featuring this cherubic representation of Cupid on Valentine's Day cards. This trend has continued up to the present day. As we draw our exploration of Valentine's Day history to a close, we've traversed centuries from ancient Roman festivals to the chivalrous courtesies of the High Middle Ages, arriving at the globally celebrated occasion it is today. Valentine's Day, as we've seen, is more than just a day for lovers. It's a tapestry of history, tradition, religion and cultural evolution, reflecting humanity's enduring need to express love and affection. But what does this journey through time mean for us today? It's a call to action, a reminder that while commercialization has undeniably left its mark on Valentine's Day, the essence of the the day lies in genuine expressions of love and appreciation. Whether it's through a handwritten note, a thoughtful gesture, or a moment taken to express gratitude to those we care about, the spirit of Valentine's Day is accessible to everyone, irrespective of the form it takes. Thank you for joining us on this historical journey. Please subscribe and share. Remember love has many stories and each of us contributes to its ongoing narrative. How will you write your chapter this Valentine's Day?